In this video, I'm going to show the hydraulic flow for a New Holland L35 skid steer with Vickers transmissions. Uh, this is what my skid steer looked like before, and this is what it looks like now. The video is going to show it in the now condition, so I just wanted to point out some things in the before, since this is probably what your skid steer looks like, and it may be more familiar looking to you. The colors that I painted mine are just my preferences. Yours are probably all yellow like this. So, just to get your bearings very quickly when you remove the seat, first thing that you should see here in the center is the four-way gearbox. You can see another video I did on that. Then you have your right side transmission and your left side transmission. Each transmission has three parts. The inside parts that have pinion gears, which are run by the drive shaft from the engine to the four-way gearbox. Those sides on each side are the pumps, then on each side in the middle you have the valve plates. Then on the outsides you have the motors. So each transmission has a pump, a valve plate, and a motor. In front of the four-way gear gearbox you'll find this blue thing, that's the vane pump. Yours should be clearly labeled Vickers. Uh, back behind here you'll see up on the top you'll see your steering cylinders. These are sometimes called servo cylinders or steering rams. And you'll also see this component here, which is the flow divider. The flow divider is the device that divides flow between each of the steering cylinders. Your flow divider and your steering cylinders will probably be marked Cessna, even though you have Vickers transmissions and a Vickers vane pump. Don't be alarmed at that. As far as I know, that's the typical condition. The last part to have an idea, three parts to have an idea about are the control valve, which is this part here. The front manifold, which is this part here, and the rear manifold, which is this part here. To ascertain that you have Vickers transmissions, if your setup looks exactly like this, you probably have Vickers transmissions. The Cessna transmissions have the steering cylinders in a slightly different configuration and location. But to be sure, use your camera and record reaching back here in this position in about this area. And on your transmission, you should see an impression on the housing that looks like this. As you can see, it says Vickers. Yours is probably going to be covered with dirt and concrete like mine was, but it's worth uh, verifying to be sure. So this should give you an idea of the general setup. The rest of the video will help you with the hydraulic flow and the purge procedure. Good luck on your repair. So to review again, the flow of hydraulic fluid in this system. I'm going to point things out. The reason I'm going to do this is in case you find yourself having to replace some component. If you know how the flow works, then you can see where you can catch your contaminants, especially if you're downstream of the filter. The large yellow thing here, that's this. That's the hydraulic tank. The hydraulic tank has one line leaving and one line returning. This is the line leaving. If I can get the camera down there. There we go. That is the suction line. The suction line back here, I can't get my hand in there, but behind that suction line uh, fitting inside the tank, there's a 100 mesh filter. Fluid from the reservoir, therefore, is only screened by that 100 mesh filter. It enters this suction line. That suction line is a low pressure line with just those hose clamps. The fluid flows through the suction line, which is only about a 14-15 inches long, into these 290s these yellow pieces, there's a 90 in the transverse direction and, then, and a 90 longitudinally. It runs into this. This is the vein pump. From the vein pump, there's three different outlets. One is this outlet, which charges the control valve. Two is this outlet, this lower port, which charges, that's that one there, which charges the flow divider. 
This is the other end of that hose right here. Charles is a flow divider. And the last one is this one on the top here, which goes down and is a drain. That line ends up right back there. Oh boy. Sorry, it's hard to get the camera in. That there. That fitting there. So that goes in behind the check valve. Let's see. That 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 deal there, not what I'm touching, but what's right behind it. Let's see if I can reach it. This. This is a check valve. This is just a four-way. So that that drain line comes in behind the check valve directly into the four-way and back into the tank. So that's the drain line. The, the flow of the other two lines, this flow to the control valve. Control valve is what you use to control your accessory hydraulics, including the bucket and the boom. Right. So the pedals, these are the pedal linkages. Any accessory hydraulics that you put on, for example, through this port, and these lines all coming out, you can just follow these to where they go, right? Whether they're charge lines or drain lines for the, uh, this is the bucket line. This is the, I'm sorry, this is the boom line. This is the bucket line. And then the charge line that goes to the flow divider, which is that one on the bottom. This is the flow divider. So it comes in, it splits. The flow divider provides fluid for the steering cylinders, also known as servo cylinders. Then they get charged here and drained here. Those drains go back to this manifold. This manifold. It's upstream from the drain down there. You have flow to the drain there via that check valve, that check valve there, or you also have flow from here to this hose, which is the hose that runs to the oil filter. So let's go look there. I'm going to just go outside. There's that hose. Comes in here to the oil filter. This is a 25 micron minimum oil filter. oil comes out of the oil filter so now we're downstream of the uh, most serious oil filter on here. There's really there's only two. One's just a screen, the other is an actual filter. So this is where we've gotten downstream of the filter. I mention this because this is where if you're replacing any components back here, this hose, anything in the cooler or the cooler itself, and the charge line on the opposite side of the cooler um, any contamination in here that you don't clean will remain in the system at least until that fluid has the chance to flow back through here. The problem is that fluid will end up in the transmissions before it has a chance to flow back through the filter. So fluid flows down this line into the cooler. There's a connection for the cooler. Flows through the cooler, out of the cooler, new line. This is a lower pressure line, as you can tell. This is the original line. This flows, or this um, continues, to the transmission junction for the charge lines for the transmission, which I'll show. Coming back around, that line marked M there, that line there next to the battery goes underneath this right hand transmission and right back here where it's very difficult to see. You actually can't see the fitting. This here behind here is where that connects. That connects to this uh, this junction here. Not this hose, not this hose. Under here to this junction to the tubes. One of these tubes goes to the valve plate on the right hand transmission. That's the charge line for the right hand transmission. The other tube goes to the valve plate on the left hand transmission. That's the charge for the left hand transmission. 
So again, if you do work downstream of the oil, oil filter and you introduce any type of contaminant, you're going to have to figure out a way of getting it out. And that's the uh, idea, um, that's the uh, philosophy, I guess, behind disconnecting that charge line and getting at least a half a gallon of oil out before reconnecting it. That's only going to clean you to this junction. If you manage to get contamination in this this length of the tubing for the charge line or that over there, then you'd have to remove those and clean those before you put them back in. So once oil is in the transmissions, doing its thing in there, a lot of the oil, it's my understanding from what I've read, a significant amount of the oil stays in those transmissions. So it's really important that it gets clean because it's not being refreshed all the time. But when it does when it does drain, it drains out here on the right hand transmission. So just to reveal again, the charge line is to the valve plate. The drain is on the pump of the transmission. So this is the pump, pump, valve plate motor. So the drain comes out of the pump and out of the pump here. It's a hose on this side. So 45, so this hose here comes down and under to this manifold. This manifold has the drain coming in from the right side and then it drains out this hose. This hose goes up and under and then that hose is that one there, right here. Goes into that 90 upstream of that check valve and that check valve either has flow well, has flow going back to the, the tank back there to the four way. So that is the flow of hydraulic fluid in this system. After starting up, when you've done some hydraulic work, whether it's replacing lines or working on the transmission or the vein pump, or what have you. Um, there's a procedure outlined in the manual that's different for the Vickers as it is for the Cessna, which instructs how to go through a purging it. I'm not going to talk about the Cessna loaders because this is not a Cessna. It's quite different on the Cessna, in fact, because uh, you're actually removing the, or disconnecting the, the coil. But on the on the Vickers, you're just starting it up as usual in a certain condition. And what that condition is, is with a couple particular ports open so that you can remove contaminants. The two ports that you're going to have open are firstly this port here on the control valve on this, on this connection coming out of the control valve. That is the port on the bottom of this hose which goes from the control valve back to that rear manifold and then eventually back into the um, either the four-way uh, four-way down there on the bottom where that manifold splits and heads to the oil cooler. So you, you loosen this and then you put a bag, something around it. When you loosen it, a little bit of fluid will come out, but really not too much. But um, Put a bag of a large enough capacity or a bucket or something that will fit. I used a, a bag just because there's not a lot of room down here, as you can see. And then I zip tied it on there. And then you're also going to disconnect the charge line to the transmissions. And that charge line is connected right back there. Not this. Not, not this. Okay. This is the drain line. This is the drain. The charge is back here. So that hose is the one marked M there. It's a low pressure hose that runs from the oil cooler to this little junction and splits with some charge going here to the right transmission and the rest going to the left side. So if you only, for example, worked on the left side transmission and you're positive that you don't have any contamination that would have fallen, for example, down this charge line and might end up over in the right, then 
my speculation, you could disconnect the, just the charge line up here and purge it for a little bit. Um, but if you replaced, for example, the charge line itself, then you need to disconnect it down there and put that charge line into a reserv into a, a tank, something, and purge that line because that line is downstream. The whole of it is downstream of the oil filter. So that means there's no way for that contamination to be taken out before it reaches the transmissions. That line's got to be very clean. That's the reason I haven't replaced it, in fact, because I did buy that line from Surplus Center, um, but I decided not to replace it at this time because while I'm very pleased overall with the Surplus Center hoses, um, you do have to clean them. You have to clean hoses anyway, but I'm, it's such a long hose that I don't have the, I don't have the tools for cleaning it in a way it being downstream of a 25 micron filter, yeah, I'm not confident that I can get it that clean. So what I'm going to do, so this is this hose here, right? Which goes to the outlet on the oil cooler. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the hose that I got from, from Surplus Center, and I'm going to take it to a hydraulic shop and ask them to clean it and pay the money for that. Um, if they say no, then I'll have to figure out, figure it out for, for now. This hose is, although it's got some damage on the outside, it's not leaking and it is a low pressure hose. I'm going to replace it with a standard hydraulic line, but it's a low pressure hose. So that's the deal. If you do decide to replace this line or if you have to do any work in the, in the cooler or any, or this, or this line for that matter, the downstream line that connects the oil filter to the cooler and you would definitely want to be purging that stuff. I didn't have to replace this line. Somebody somewhere along the way did. Looks pretty good. So I did have to move this oil filter back a little bit so I added these brackets here and that's because I pushed the uh, that rear manifold. I moved that rear manifold back a little bit to accommodate for some of my longer hoses. So just bear that in mind. Just keep an, keep an understanding of where you might have introduced contaminants and uh, what, whether or not they're on the uh, downstream side of the filters.